Hey there everyone, Daniel Can here, and I have got a different kind of video again today. We haven't done any new content uh, since the Christmas break, and I'm going to blame that mainly on starting a new job at work. And so Emily and I have both been working some different hours and our days off don't coincide very well anymore. So we haven't really had much opportunity to go out and do any touring or checking things out, which is unfortunate. The weather has been great, but uh, we've been sticking pretty close to home. So anyway, I thought what I would do instead is take us back to May the 21st of 2009, when I had the opportunity to do a tour of Elvis Presley's Graceland Mansion in Memphis, Tennessee. So let's pop back and uh, take a trip back in time and visit Graceland. So a couple things I will cover right off the top. Number one, uh, this video is all still images. I didn't record any video at Graceland, so this is just going to be a series of pictures for you to look at. Some of the pictures may not be the best quality. I had only owned my Nikon D90 at this point for about four months, so I was still really trying to figure out how to use it. So, you know, the technology, obviously, uh, almost 13 years ago was not as good as it is today, and my skills certainly weren't uh, as good as they are today, so keep that in mind as we go through this. So Graceland was originally part of a 500-acre farm that was owned by the S.E. Toof family of Memphis. The land had been in their family for multiple generations and was named for one of their relatives, Grace. So Grace's niece, Ruth Brown Moore, and her husband, Thomas Moore, built the original Graceland Mansion in 1939. At that time, it was just over 10,000 square feet and, of course, Elvis came along and purchased it in 1957 for just over $100,000. Now, if you account for inflation, that is still just under a million dollars in 2022. So, he actually got it for quite a bargain. I don't think you could buy Graceland for a million dollars today. Elvis was just 22 years old when he bought the property. And of course, in the time that he owned it, which really was only 20 years uh, before he, he died there, he expanded it and Graceland today, the building covers over 17,000 square feet. And you can see a lot of this addition is in the back along this section here. Now, speaking of inflation, just for fun, I dug up my original uh, email confirmation from my tour in 2009, and at that time, I paid $29.70 for the ticket, and today, I was just on the Graceland website, and the equivalent tour costs $77, so more than double in cost uh, just in that time frame between 2009 and 2022. So starting off the tour, they pick you up in the parking lot, put you on a shuttle bus, and drive you across Elvis Presley Boulevard onto the Graceland grounds. So one of the first things you see, of course, are the iconic gates of Graceland. And unfortunately, I didn't get a very good photo of them. I took this shot just after one of the shuttle buses had gone through. So the, the iron gates are actually open and you can't really get a good view of them here. You get dropped off in front of the mansion right at the main front entrance of the original 1939 Graceland Mansion. And one of the things you never think of on these tours is just how hard it is to actually get a photo of the building 
without a whole bunch of people in the shot because there are constantly people coming and going as different tours end and start. So I did manage to capture a good one here or a fairly good one here with no people in the, in the front and just to kind of cover one of the more macabre kind of parts of the uh, tour is, you know, it's quite well known that in 1977, Elvis Presley died in the bathroom at Graceland. That bathroom is on the second floor. The entire second floor is blocked off and inaccessible to the tour, so you don't get to go up there. Uh, up there, uh, the two most famous rooms, of course, would be Elvis's bedroom, which is located here, and the bathroom where he died, which is right here, basically right above the main entrance. So as you walk into Graceland, you are walking under the spot where Elvis died in 1977. Once you've gone through the main doors and enter, off to your right is the living room, featuring this beautiful fireplace and, of course, this uh, 1970s television, just what you would expect. And beyond the living room, in an area that you're not actually allowed to walk through, past and under all that beautiful stained glass with the peacocks, is the music room, with uh, complete with piano. On the opposite side of the main entrance is the dining room. Quite opulent, very nicely appointed, and not really looking that much different than you might expect from a formal dining room today. Carrying on past the stairs that go up to the forbidden second floor, uh, there is to the right another bedroom. I believe this was the bedroom that was used by Elvis's parents during the time that they lived with him at Graceland. And then you make a turn around the corner to the left and you enter the kitchen. And this is where you really get your first impression about how Graceland is very much a 1970s time capsule house. Um, this kitchen is something that would look quite at home in the Brady Bunch house. Uh, it's, uh, it's a time capsule, we'll say that. And they've done a nice job in not really changing very much. After the kitchen, and just before proceeding into the basement, you go past the infamous jungle room. Now, apparently Elvis called this the den, but it was an addition that he built onto the house in the mid-60s. And the name, the jungle room, really became more popular when Graceland was opened as a museum and open to the public uh, in the early 80s. But, I mean, it's got everything you'd expect from a 1970s uh, den. Uh, the green shag carpet, a built-in waterfall decorated with all sorts of lacquer furniture. Once you're downstairs, there's kind of two main rooms in the basement of Graceland. The first is Elvis's TV room. So like all great, well-appointed uh, TV rooms, it comes complete with a wet bar. And at what would have been considered an obscene level of connectivity, or however you want to say it, for the 70s, Elvis actually had three TVs in his TV room so he could watch all three of the major TV networks at the same time. Now, when you compare it to what we have today, that seems so quaint, but being able to watch three networks at the same time in one place, that was pretty amazing back in those days. I mean, I remember growing up, even into the early 1980s in our house, we had one primary color TV and then like a little 14-inch black and white portable TV that often sat uh, in our kitchen dining room area. So, I mean, you know, I thought we were doing great. We had two TVs. Elvis had three in just one room. And across from the TV room is the pool room or billiards room. 
And the only way you can describe this is it was probably a good idea at the time. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. This is a room you would not want to walk into if you were on some sort of drug trip. Or maybe it is the sort of room you'd want to walk into if you were on a drug trip. Apparently, this room has 350 yards of pure cotton fabric all coming out from that center point above the ceiling and covering all the walls. Irony here is this is the only room in Graceland that actually has a wood burning fireplace. So nothing says, you know, fire safety quite like, hey, let's take the only place where we can have an actual fire in the house. The other fireplace that I showed you upstairs is gas burning. We can take an actual wood burning fireplace and put it in the room that is surrounded with 350 yards of flammable fabric. Apparently, they stopped using this fireplace after this room was decorated this way in 1974 for that exact reason. So after that, you're kind of done with Graceland proper in terms of the mansion, and you emerge out into the backyard. And so here's a view of Graceland from the back, a much uh, less seen view than the front. Your next stop is Vernon Presley's office. Uh, Vernon was Elvis's dad and looked after a lot of his personal affairs while the famous Colonel Tom Parker looked after Elvis's professional career. But you can see this is the sign as you're coming into Vernon's office, basically saying no loafing. It's, uh, you know, you're here to do business. And I think, you know, I don't know if Elvis got that from Vernon, but of course Elvis's personal motto was TCB, taking care of business. And uh, so, you know, it was very much a get down to work and get it done attitude that seemed to permeate the Presley family. All the trappings of your classic 1970s office are here. The giant metal filing cabinets, the thick green yellow carpeting it's just like uh, almost out of a scene out of Mad Men. another little interesting building here in the back of graceland is this which i believe was originally a smokehouse but inside it they have a model of elvis's birthplace in uh, mississippi and this was also a building that Elvis converted into a shooting or target range. So he uh, had had no use for it as a smokehouse, I guess, and and used it instead for target practice. Next up, we move into the trophy building. And this is where you start to get all the Elvis memorabilia. So while Graceland, the house, is very much focused on Elvis's personal side and his private side, the trophy room is all about the public Elvis persona. Here we have Elvis's gold record for Heartbreak Hotel, 1956. So basically, you know, the success of this record is what allowed Elvis to buy Graceland in the first place. And I think this is a neat little image here, uh, a pamphlet or whatever, saying thank you, Milton, for having me on your TV show, you know, from Elvis. And uh, the nation's only atomic-powered singer. And I think it's really amazing how Elvis, you know, started out as this rockabilly, rock and roll, guitar, three chords kind of, uh, you know, country boy, and kind of went through the entire atomic and space age of the 50s and 60s and pops out in the 1970s as you know the sequin jumpsuit kind of vegas performer and the transformation of elvis as a performer sort of follows the transformation of america's culture at that time from the the more simple 1950s right through to the 
crazy glitz and glamour of the 70s. And I think, you know, while... Elvis fans understand this. I don't think the general public who's just kind of a casual Elvis fan really understands the impact he had on the movie scene as well, right? He's thought of as a singer and a a rock and roll performer, but, you know, his his movies did quite well. <laughs> There's a lot I could say about this picture, but this was an era where I really did not want to be on the front side of a camera. I was much happier behind it. And I think that expression on my face kind of shows that. Um, I also think it's just I wasn't happy getting my picture taken while I've got the dorky audio tour uh, and headphone thing wrapped around my neck. Like there's just no good way to look good in an image while you're on an audio tour. By the same token, though, I probably still own that shirt somewhere if I dig into my closet far enough. And if you're of a certain age, you will clearly remember these giant console televisions. Uh, this one here was a gift from the RCA Corporation to Elvis for the sale of 50 million records between 1956 and 1960. That is just an amazing sales record. And after all the awards and memorabilia, it's back outside into the meditation garden, the swimming pool, and the area where Elvis and members of his family are actually laid to rest. So here we see the resting spot of Gladys Presley, Elvis's mother, Vernon, Elvis's father, And, of course, Elvis himself. Minnie Mae Presley is actually Vernon's mother, Elvis's paternal grandmother. So she's also laid to rest here in the meditation garden. So this is the lobby of the racquetball building. So my understanding is that since our tour in 2009, this has been converted back into an actual racquetball court and restored to its 1977 appearance. But at the time of our tour, it was just another giant hall filled with more memorabilia and awards and Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. So having completed the tour of the Graceland Mansion and the grounds of Graceland, we go back on the shuttle bus across the street to the area by the parking lot where there is a giant building that houses a lot more Elvis stuff, uh, including, of course, his famous collection of cars, which... Uh, is quite remarkable. Uh, Elvis had a thing for cars and, uh, of course, the infamous pink Cadillac that uh, he bought for his mother, I believe. So it's, it's, a, it's a long tour. It definitely will take you multiple hours to see it all, especially if you are a giant Elvis fan and you really want to see a lot of things in depth. Um, but yeah, it was definitely worth, you know, the $29 or whatever I paid back in 2009. I'm still trying to get over the shock of it being, you know, $77 for the tour now. That I know inflation has done a lot of things, but I just can't believe how much that went up. And, of course, also parked outside are Elvis's planes and he has two planes on the grounds. The first that we're looking at here, Elvis bought in April of 1975 and named it the Lisa Marie. It's a 1958 Convair 880. Uh, he spent 
over eight hundred thousand dollars or almost eight hundred thousand dollars having it remodeled which considering that you know that's more than what he paid for graceland itself is quite amazing the other one is the smaller lockheed jet star that elvis had outfitted with this yellow and green color scheme it was primarily used by Elvis's manager and staff going between city and city when he was on concert tours. So the big one was kind of Elvis's plane. This was more for his staff and entourage. Anyway, that was a relatively quick tour of Graceland. Again, original uh, visit date was May the 21st, 2009. So soon will have been 13 years since i was in memphis and i could really go for some good true memphis barbecue again uh hopefully someday when all the covid stuff settles down with travel restrictions and testing and whatnot and traveling isn't such a pain i would love to get the chance to go back to tennessee and hit both nashville and memphis again so hope you enjoyed it again a little bit of a different video but it's been a long time since i've put anything new out there so i wanted to have something uh to put on the channel especially if you are one of the new subscribers here it's always a good opportunity to to see not just what i'm doing currently but some of the stuff from the past so thank you very much for watching